I want to start hammering home all the big priorities that I feel like every real estate agent should be focused on so that you can improve your quality of life dramatically uh, through real estate sales, but also having a consistent business and then working with people that are interested in things where you share common interests. You're working with people where you're sharing a common inter uh, interest. So obviously my big soapbox things that I want to be hammering home with agents right now is their database, nurturing your database. You guys are not gonna build the businesses that you wanna build uh, until you start having 10 conversations a day, a minimum of 10 conversations a day. So uh, Amber, I have, I asked Blake to add me to the team group chat mm -hmm. and that didn't happen. So I don't know if, are you able to do that to add me? Um, so, or can somebody add me? Yeah. So Stephanie, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Stephanie has been, so we have to do a completely new group text. Um, so I can email Stephanie to redo that because I think we've got some Birmingham agents on there also um, that she's got their numbers. There might be some of us that haven't saved their phone numbers in our phone yet. Okay. Well, if okay. we got to, if we got to redo it all together to get me in, I think it's important to get me in uh -huh. so that, um, you know, I can kind of start taking more of a lead role in trainings like this one. And just engaging with the team members overall, just to make sure like they don't forget that I'm here and that they can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me um, and just other initiatives that I think we all should be working on, right? So one of the things that I encouraged, let's see, I think if you take it as uh, the, the past two weeks as a whole, I talked to... I think I talked to Tara about this. I think I talked to Todd about this. Um, yeah, I talked to a few of y'all, maybe even Trey, I'm not sure. But like, so the agents that are really focused on hitting their 10 conversations a day, uh, for them to post in the group text, hey, I hit my 10 conversations today, or hey, it took me 50 dials, but I got my 10 conversations in. Uh, so talking about conversations, but also talking about appointments so that we can stay super motivated and motivate each other. I mean, one of the strongest things we used to do as a team, and I think Blake would attest to this, is when we posted our daily numbers. We used to all post um, a key set of standard figures, like how many dials we made, um, I can't remember what it all was. Like, like total prospecting time, how many dials, how many conversations, how many appointments, how many referrals, something like that. How many referrals did we send or receive? And it was just powerfully motivating to see, um, for other agents to see like where, how these top agents on our team, the ones that are selling the most real estate are structuring their days and what their priorities and commitments are. And so it was a big motivating factor for a lot of folks. I'd love to see y'all get back to that because there are definitely members, teammates that are not focused on daily conversations, you know, getting their 10 conversations in. And so if, um, if you're one of those agents, just know how much of a difference you can make in the lives and uh, businesses of teammates who are not getting those dials in, not getting those conversations done on a daily basis, at least having, you know, somewhere between uh, 50 to 100 a week. I mean, there's some of y'all that are doing way over, averaging way over 10 of the day, and some that are very sporadically even picking up the phone. So motivating each other would be a big, uh, big, powerful thing to, to re-implement on the team. So people firing each other up over their daily numbers. 
Uh, and just make no mistake here, the path to success in real estate is math. So however many conversations you have a day, a week, a month, a quarter, a year is going to have a direct correlation to the size of your bank accounts and subsequently your real estate portfolios. Uh, the other thing, obviously, that you guys need to be doing is a hefty amount of research, daily research, uh, running your businesses like a business. We were on a, I was on, I've been on coaching calls and freaking, uh, I've been coached this morning. We've got a, a coach that teaches JPAR um, owners and recruiters. And so one thing that our um, coach told us today on our call that I thought was awesome um, she started talking about why real estate agents, why the vast majority of us are not successful and why a lot of new real estate agents flounder. And it's because they think that they're going into a sales job and they're not. And so many of you may on this call right now may think that you got into real estate sales to be a salesperson. Can anybody tell me why that's the wrong mindset and the wrong approach to this industry? Anybody? Anybody? Because you don't sell to people. Because hmm? you're in the relational business. Yeah. Okay. Servant, servant parts, not selling. Okay, these are, none of these are wrong answers, but there is a more right answer. There's a mostly right answer and those are not mostly right. You get this? I mean, this is one of those things where it's a game changer. This is a game changing. Educators. What's that? Educators. Nope. So like here, I mean, herein lies a great example, right? Everybody on this call is, has a, the, has approaching this industry the wrong way. So because we we're facilitators. I mean, relationships just, I mean, I guess that's, but I feel like that's the wrong answer. <laughs> Are we facilitators? Okay. Let's do this real quick. Somebody go to. Uh, jparstrong.com and look in the about me section or about us. Let me see what it's called. Learn, earn, give, sir. All right. You there? You see our core values? Core uh, mission, vision. I think they updated this. Yeah. So just go to about us and the top uh, the page you'll see core values, mission, and vision. So what does it say? Amber, read mission out loud. Yeah, we are the home of productive, accountable real estate business owners. Okay, so here's the quote from my coaching call with my coach earlier today. It's not a sales job. You're actually starting a business. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. a sales job. You're actually starting a business. If you guys can get this concept that you're not salespeople, you're business owners. It's, it's a game changer, okay? And then you start, I want you to start holding accountable the two, the differences between these two mindsets. Okay, so the main one I want you to focus on is ownership. The extreme ownership that a business owner has to take from a mindset to actions, to scheduling, to research, to educating people. I mean, if you're going to uh, be able to serve people at the highest level, then you've got to be highly educated. And I'm not talking about formal education. I'm talking about self-education. So just think about that. Like, I don't know if you guys can grasp it on this call, but if you spent some time today going, oh my God, he's totally right. I've been approaching this 
from the mindset and the vantage point of a salesperson and not a business owner. This is not a sales job. This is a business. This is a business that you are tasked with running and operating. Okay. So if part of your job description as a real estate business owner is to talk to people. Okay. So if you don't get in those 10 conversations at least five days a week, you're not running a successful business. You're not building a successful business. You're not building a business that um, has a strong foundation and you need a strong foundation in order to build a business that has long-term viability, okay? Long-term, okay? This is a long-term business that will survive ups and downs and high interest rates and low interest rates and sellers markets and buyers markets and all this type of stuff, okay? So the main problem that real estate people, real estate graduates, real estate agents that pass the test, pass, you know, get complete their coursework and get a passing grade on the state test, the problem is, is that they think they're getting into sales and they're not, they're starting a business. Okay. And business owners have to get up every day and turn their open sign on. They got to get up every day and execute the proper order of priority when it comes to dollar productive activities. So think about that, right? Are you a salesperson or a business owner? This is the value proposition that we're taking as a company, is that a commitment to make sure that we are approaching this business from the right mindset and we're executing the proper order of priority of dollar productive activities. So this is game changing stuff, right? Game changing stuff. Now, everybody on this call should have their why, what drives them. Okay, I, I posted a uh, powerful clip from one of Diana's trainings at uh, the jumpstart we had, I think in April, and she was talking about her why. Okay, her why. It's like growing up. Uh, and having to live in an environment where, you know, they were kind of coasting on fumes, like Diana's parents were kind of coasting on fumes in terms of being able to pr provide for their kids. So Diana grew up in a very hostile environment, not a loving marriage. Her dad was super wild, super partier. They fought all the time. They were, you know, they weren't making a lot of money. They were poor. Um, so she ended up leaving home at like 15 and getting her own place and her own job. And she's been on her own ever since. Okay. So she's taken it. She's had to take extreme ownership of her circumstances, um, since she was 15 years old. Okay. So come hell or high water, she never wanted to experience or her, she didn't want her life to mirror that particular point in her life ever again. She never wanted to go back to that, to living a life of financial stress and insecurity. I mean, just think about like, if your parents are stressed out about how the bills are going to get paid this month and is the power going to get turned off and are we going to be able to have enough food on the table? Like if that's your reality as a child, and if you see your parents fearful, that, I mean, that fear is transferred onto children like tenfold. They feel it big time because all of our security comes from our parents. All of our provision comes from our parents. And when the person or persons are tasked, who are tasked with providing us and providing our shelter, our food, our safety, like if they're looking at us, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that this month or next month, you're scared. Okay. And so fear is fear of returning to that reality is Diana's greatest motivator. Okay. So to be a business owner, 
To have a business owner mindset, you have to be connected to what drives you. Okay. And I don't think that we can't, we just cannot move on y'all. We can't move on as an industry, as a team, as colleagues, as peers, until we start getting some of these fundamental things solidified in our minds and in our businesses and our schedules and our daily activities, the way we talk to ourselves, the way we plan for the future. So we just can't get past some of this stuff. So what, what are the big rocks right now that, you know, that I'm soapbox preaching about that you've heard a, you've heard this a lot before you've heard this over and over and over. I just don't think, I think we're doing ourselves a disservice as an industry, as a team, as a brokerage, as colleagues, by not holding each other accountable to these very, very important foundational building blocks of any successful business. Okay. So mindset, why, what is your driver? Knowing what drives you doing research daily, deep market research every single day, uh, nurturing your database, building it and nurturing it every single day. So everybody you meet, everybody, you know, Everybody that you know, like, and trust and know, likes, and trust you needs to be in your database and needs to be set up on a systematic touch plan. So mindset, driver, research, database, schedule, schedule. Every day you start off with the research, you go right into um, the script call. Then you go right from the script call to your prospecting calls. Hopefully you're getting all that done before lunch. And then after lunch, you're hitting the pavement. You're out in the field. You're filming content. You're having conversations. You're going on appointments. You're showing yourself homes. You're previewing property. And hopefully that afternoon activity is deeply rooted and in congruency with your specialization. Okay, so if I want to be a new construction specialist, and I'm Keith. So I get up, I make my calls. I do my research in the morning. I, a lot of my research is geared towards new construction stats, but I also want to know the difference between what's happening in the resale market and in the new construction market. What's going on with those two key factors? All right. And so Keith lives in Hoover. I want to focus on Hoover. What are all the new construction communities in Hoover? I want to know where they are, what builders are building in those communities. What differentiates those builders from each other? Uh, what are the favorite models, the most popular models that are sold in those communities? What are the, um, I don't know if I said this or not yet, but what differentiates each one of those builders from each other? What differentiates each one of those subdivisions amenity wise and maybe convenience wise? So there's a lot of factors um, that need to be considered there and need to be the focus of our research because it matches our specialization, right? Uh, if we're going to be farming a subdivision, then our research needs to be deeply rooted in the stats for that subdivision or subdivisions. Okay. All right. Questions about that? So we need to, we need to make sure our mind's right. We need to understand that we are in the the banking business, okay? The data banking business. We're data bankers, okay? And our data bank is our database. And we need to love on that. The more we love on our database, the more money we're gonna make. And so that's why it's really important to be tied to your driver, what drives you, and then also have some goals in there, right? Some things to celebrate. So I was on, I've been on coaching calls all dang day. Some JPAR people are starting to, um, from across the country, are starting to reach out to me for coaching. And, and then I am planting the seed with those agents about the importance of joining us on the script call. Because if we can get 25 or 30 people on that script call in the morning, it's going to be bad to the bone, right? So we need to be telling people all the time about it. And I was on a coaching call this morning with one of our JPAR agents out of our FairUp office, who's heard me talk about the script call till I'm blue in the face, 
but was like, where do I get access to that? Had no clue. I don't even know that it even existed, really. It wasn't even on his radar at all. But yeah, I'm talking about it all the time, all the time. So that just kind of goes to show you kind of how aloof we are as an industry and as a brokerage and as a team and as colleagues, we're just kind of like, we're missing a lot of stuff. We're just kind of like, ooh, in la la land. All right. And we got to focus. But another one of those coaching calls I was on um, this morning, I asked that agent, I was like, are you married? Do you have kids? She had like two or three kids. She was married. I was like, all right, where, where, what have y'all been talking about owning or experiencing that we could find power in? We could find fuel there. We can find accountability there. What are some things that you guys are talking about as a family? And she said, we have been wanting to take our kids to Disney for as long as I can remember. They want to go more than anything I can think of in the world. This is something we want to make happen. I said, imagine the accountability factor of booking that trip, booking it for the end of this year or the first part of next year, calling Disney, getting that vacation planner on the phone and putting down a deposit. The power of a deadline, the power of the accountability factor power of getting your husband and your kids on board, like everybody wants this one thing. And so I said, imagine you're, you empower your kids and your husband around this goal. And then you empower them to hold you accountable. So when they get off the school bus or you go pick them up from school or whatever the case may be, at the end of the day, when your paths cross for the first time, they're going to ask you, mom, how many conversations you have today? Did you set any appointments? Did you stick to your schedule? We want to go to Disney. And we know you got to have 10 conversations a day for us to do that. Think about that. What, what deadlines could you guys set? All you got to do is look at the, look at sports. Look how hard players play in the minutes and seconds leading up to halftime and the end of regulation. Blake knows this. I'm a big sports buff. So like I've just deep dive. I know all the sports stuff, don't I, Blake? Lack a load of baloney, Jason. <laughs> yeah, biggest, biggest one I know. Yeah, I'm a huge sports uh, buff. Uh, but I'm enough of a sports buff to know or to recognize how hard players play uh, as those final seconds uh, tick away. Okay, so what deadlines can you set? Uh, what by when? What by when? Okay, and I want you guys to celebrate. Like that could be her big goal, but I also told this agent, I was like, we need stuff to celebrate like every month. Like, I want to see long weekends, places. I want to see you guys going out to maybe a bougie dinner once a month. I mean, little things, right? Paying off debt, just paying off chunks of debt. Uh, starting to game plan about building your real estate portfolio, your investment portfolio. So is there anybody on the call today that can tell me that their mindset is right? They have a business owner mindset, not a salesperson mindset that they are. So that's number one. Number two, connected to what drives you. You're connected to what drives you. Three, your day is run not by the uh, circumstances around you or by distractions or by busy work. Like you, your day is run by your schedule. That's what controls your day, your schedule. And then that scheduled day kicks off every day with research. And then you go right in to your just extremely important goal of dialing until you get 10 people on the phone and have 10 meaningful conversations. And then you're outside, you're in the field every afternoon, going on appointments, showing yourself homes, doing business pop buys, popping by the businesses of people you recently put under contract 
and dropping them off their favorite box of movie candy with a little note attached going, I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. You, you, you persevered. You never gave up. We got beat out on nine prior offers, but you stuck in there and we got this one accepted. And I'm so proud to be your real estate agent, to be your friend and just so grateful for you trusting me, you know, trusting the process and trusting me. And then everybody at their workplace is going to go, who was that? Would they drop off? What, what's the note say? And word's going to spread like wildfire through that office. And you're be like, gosh, I've worked with like two or three realtors. Nobody ever dropped off a box of candy for me when we got a, when we put our house under contract or we got our offer accepted. I want to work with Amber. She's awesome. Anybody on the call that can tell me that they are hitting these, they checking all these boxes? So safe to say the answer is no. Um, no. What do you th- would you say, Amber? No, I was just saying no, not all of them. I tend to let clients run my schedule. Um, does, so the doctor, does the doctor let their patients run their no. office? Does a lawyer let their clients run their day? They definitely don't. They charge extra if they don't meet their scheduled time. So is there anybody you know that that that's that calls themselves a professional in their field that lets other people decide what they do every day or you know it goes back to what we learn in discover leadership are you the wind or the flag mm-hmm. and if you're letting your clients run your day then you're at the you're at their mercy. Okay, so the flag is at the mercy of the wind. All right, so you want to be the wind, not the flag. And right now, a lot of you are running your businesses like flags. I know that sounded that probably sounded bad. All right, Blake is a total flag. You might see what I did there. Okay, I move on. Um, but think about so I want you to think about this. So not everything, like you say, I'm. I'm I'm doing some of those things, but not all of those things. But what happens when you start checking all the boxes? What happens? Like the magic that happens when you start checking all those boxes. And and listen, some days, you know, what is that? uh, Let's see if I can get this right. The Sam Elliott quote. Do I have any big Lebowski fans? on the call, like Big Lebowski is like one of my favorite movies of all time. But Sam Elliott says in that movie he goes, sometimes or some days you eat the bar and some days the bar eats you. So some days, Amber, your schedule is going to get totally foobarred by the kid that's throwing up at school, the um, gym instructor who you, you've got to pick up a ship because they're sick or clients that just flew into town and Surprise, we're here, Amber, and we need three of your days. Would you need to clear your schedule for three days and work with us? Give us all your time and attention. You're like, holy crap. Thanks for the heads up. All right, so things are going to happen. But what I am telling you is that you recognize when those things happen. You recognize when you're being the flag and not the wind. And you go, damn it, I've got to be the wind, not the flag. And Start building up those walls of protection. Start building up the strength of your mindset to recognize like, hey, I've been the flag for like two or three days in a row here. I got to be the wind. If I want to get to a place where I am truly living a life by my own design, I've got to be the wind more and the flag less. Okay. All right. So what questions do we have? Um, what, what questions around developing a specialization? What are you known for? Does anybody feel like they're known for something in the community yet? In the markets they serve? You know, the problem we have as real estate agents is that we're known, we're just not well known. And in order for us to achieve whatever our definition is of the pinnacle of success, a big part of that is being known for something super uber specific and expertise, specialization, a niche, a farm, 
somewhere where we just, this one segment or aspect of the market, we own it. Like we're the guy, we're the gal, we're the expert, we're the person you call when you have this problem and you need somebody to help you solve it. So you can kind of see, right? I mean, you know, if you're making $100,000 a year, doing these things are is the key to doubling that business, to getting to $200,000 a year and so on and so forth. Okay, because the idea here is, so we've established that the main, one of the main problems that real estate agents have is they are approaching, they view themselves as salespeople. They approach life as salespeople and they think they're getting the sales when actually they're starting a business. Okay. And with that business comes or should come an extreme ownership mindset. So we can just kind of see this, right? We can kind of see where there's uh, gaps in the, in our business, but we can also see probably that we're like, if you're tired right now, like if you're really suffering, suffering from fatigue, uh, if you feel like you're kind of burning out, this is because you're just, you, you're not building a business. It's because salespeople get burned out. Okay. Business owners do not. Business owners have a great deal of leverage. They build a strong customer base. They like their customers, their customers like them. And the purpose of a business is to make a profit. Okay. So it could be a big win today. If you start speaking life over yourself and that life you speak is that I'm a business owner, not a salesperson. And how do business owners approach their days and their weeks, their minutes and their hours differently than I approach mine or my prior mindset of that of a salesperson? So we can have a big win today if we say, all right, we're salespeople. We didn't get in this to be sales or we didn't get into real estate rather to be salespeople. We got in to build a business. So how am I building my business? And am I building it in such a way where it's going to be indestructible, where it is not at the mercy of the market? Okay. We just adapt to the changing tide. Okay. We adapt to the changing tide. That's all. That's what business owners do. They don't go out of business when rates go up. They just adapt. All right. So. A business is typically known for one specific thing. Like you love the what at where. Oh, I love going there because of this. Or they're the place I go for this brand of clothing. Businesses have to stick out. They have to, you know, they, they have to be known for something. Like they admit something... They need to stand out in one area of another in order to get that brand recognition. That's you guys get that, right? Your, your brand is recognizable because of what? It's not because you're a generalist. It's not because you, you have little bits of expertise in all these million different things. It's because you have one primary expertise and one primary thing that a lot of people are interested in. And then you stop working. You stop feel like you're working because if we do what we love, we never work a day in our lives. Okay. And if we specialize in what something we're passionate about, super interested about, it's not going to feel like work and it's going to bring a lot of, bring us a lot of attention. It's going to draw a lot of attention to our businesses. And it's going to be a lot of inbound business, a lot of reverse prospecting. We call that. Okay. All right. So I know I'm rambling on here a bunch, but I hope some of y'all are seeing like, We've talked about this a lot. Like Amber, you especially, we've talked about your schedule for, it feels like many years now. And it's something you still are not committed to fixing. Um, and so I hope you guys will take this very seriously is that we don't achieve, like we don't succeed alone. We have to 
have a really good supporting cast. And a big part of that should be each other. That should be a huge value proposition of being teammates and team members is that you have a tribe of accountability. You have a tribe of people that are focused on productivity and you're sending text messages or you're calling each other throughout the week going, Hey, are you sticking to your schedule? And I can tell, like, I can go, listen, all I got to do is a Facebook audit, a social media audit. I go to your Facebook personal page and I can tell if you're a specialist or a generalist. I can tell if you're a hobbyist. I can tell if you treat this business like a business or be treated like a hobby. I can tell by your, just your personal Facebook pages. So if I can tell, everybody else can tell too. Okay, so there's a, um, a big barometer of whether you're on the right track or not is to see what you're posting on social. What are you posting about? Now, if everybody could make a point to listen to the last, the most recent episode of the Magic City Business Podcast, where we talked to a really successful real estate agent up here, Jordan Hosey, and listen to that podcast and just listen to the confidence in her voice, uh, the fulfillment she gets from her real estate career uh, because she stumbled upon her specialization and she went deep like really deep and she's still going deep. And I want you to see like the timeline from when she started on this journey of specializing um, to where she is now, which is like crazy success. So see what she's been able to put together and accomplish in a year or two by specializing. It should get you all like fired up, fired up. Okay. Okay. All right, what questions do we got? Any talking points anybody else wants to cover? Any burning questions that can be related to what we've been talking about on this call that cannot be related to what we're talking about on this call? Anybody? Nobody? Got nothing. Bueller? Bueller? What are you going to do to specialize? What are you going to do? What steps are you going to take this week? What steps are you going to take this week to put yourself in a position to self-discover your specialization? I take you- my Florida exam tomorrow and that's been a goal. So I'm really excited. All right. What is that? What does that, what does this mean for your business? How does this, what does this mean for your specialization and what you're going to be known for? Uh, so so I've had to refer people that were looking across the full coast to, to another agent. Um, and this is going to change my business by being able to keep those people. And I, I'm trying to kind of niche myself as a relocation expert since I relocated to the area. And I know the coast is a real kind of vacation home or people from out of state are coming here. So I hope that will help my my niche. Okay, so this gives us a lot to work with here, right? So I, Aaron, I should look, your social media should be heavily relocation oriented. So telling your story about how you came to be here. Um, You know, uh, think about how many hits that video that you made or that TikTok you made about what it was, the top 10. What I learned from moving to Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that that got like a lot of engagement, right? And so um, just continuing that line of, of content you know, why are five of the fastest growing cities in Alabama located in Baldwin County? What's the draw? What's drawing people here? And you could talk to, this gives you a talking point, okay? So we're always looking for, I know we're always looking for 
something that makes our prospecting calls just a little bit easier. Okay. And one of those things that makes it um, much easier is to be relational and not transactional, like to take an interest in these people. But what Aaron could do is, is she could say, Hey, I'm working on becoming a relocation specialist and, and make no mistake, Aaron, there is a, uh, a designation for that, if I'm not mistaken. So oh. look up the realtor designation for relocation and get it. Okay. But if you're talking to your boomtown leads uh, and you can see that they're not from around here, you can, you can just say, hey, I'm working on becoming a relocation specialist because I relocated here to the area from out of state. How did Baldwin County or how did Fair Hope or how did Gulf Shores, like how do these places get on your radar? And listen to what they're saying. Listen to how they became connected with the area. And it's going to give you all kind of content ideas to make videos that you need to make, uh, blogs that need to be written, uh, you know, things that need to be going on your YouTube channel. So, um, you know, people, you need to talk about schools, about climate, about taxes, insurance, um, you know, keeping up with all kinds of things. Like there's a lot of stuff going on right now at the Gulf Shores airport. So expansion of that. And so a lot of content can be written on the fact that it's just not easy for people. I mean, people have to make the difficult decision of flying into Pensacola or Mobile and Mobile airport is a long way, right? For to Gulf Shores and Orange beach, Pensacola is a lot closer, but none of them are really ideal. Okay. So if people could fly direct into Gulf Shores, I think that would be big for the local economy the local real estate economy, but there's a lot of information out there at all times around what's going on with schools, what's going on with things like the airport, uh, infrastructure wise, you know, bridges getting built, uh, a lot of downtown areas being uh, revitalized uh, and Foley. I mean, you've just got all kinds of stuff to write about, about OWA, but what is there to do from a lifestyle component as well? What are the most popular annual events in Baldwin County? So I think this is a great niche to have. You just need to be heavily researched in it. So what is different between Alabama's tax rate? Uh, what's different? What is, is, is Alabama a more affordable? Uh, or less affordable than a lot of places in terms of taxes, insurance, uh, income tax implications, all these types of things, okay? So this is a really strong and really interesting niche. Um, and you can develop it really big and then you can make a lot of money by making sure you get your 10 conversations in a day in Boomtown. So there's time to do all of this stuff. So does anybody have a, a niche or a specialization that they're thinking about? Does anybody need help coming up with their niche or specialization? I mean, we cannot, let's say, let's say this again. I think it's worth saying we cannot, we can't, y'all need to be on this soapbox as much as I am. Y'all need to be beating this drum as loud as I am in terms of how important being connected to what drives you is, how important research is to your business, how important it is to make your contacts every day, to nurture your database, to manage your database properly, like making notes in Boomtown, scheduling your to-dos, making sure all those to-dos get done, okay? Running your business like a business, getting obsessed with your schedule, obsessed with your 10 conversations a day, uh, obsessed with learning as much as you can about the market and about your specialization. Like we can't get off this soapbox, y'all. We just cannot. We cannot stop beating this drum until every person in our circle of influence, every person under the sound of our voice, every person that will listen, every agent in our office, every teammate starts making these priorities their big rocks that, they, that they're focused on every single day. Okay? Because... 
just think about that, right? Think about who's counting on y'all. Who's counting on y'all to be the providers? Who's counting on y'all to be able to come through and not have to say, we can't afford it? Or I don't know, I mean, God forbid, I don't know how we're going to eat this month or how our bills are going to get paid this month. Okay. Anybody, I will, we can just, we can talk through this as long as it takes. And we can work on this one-on-one -on -one as long as it takes till we can start making some progress here. Because I can just tell you, talking about these things for over a year, over six months, even over three months is unacceptable when we think about how many people are counting on us. And when we're thinking about just how big life can be, you know, think about how big life can be. Let's think about this. I think this is a powerful statement. Let's think about how big life can be if we stop playing small. Think about how big your life can be once you make the commitment to stop playing small and start running the plays that work. Mindset, schedule, research, time blocking for prospecting, developing a specialization, mastering the market, mastering the language of sales. Really powerful stuff. Okay. Anybody else want to say anything, talk about a specialization they're working on, ask for help. Now's your opportunity. I've, I've been saying that I think everybody needs to specialize on the off markets. Um, I've been saying it for a while with forewarn. It's probably one of the best bits of technology we've had in about six, seven years. And, uh, all you got to do is leverage one buyer. And just so you know, Jason, I gave him two examples uh, via Calera, a 190 buyer. He obviously wants to list his home, but the, the seller also wants me to find a house in Columbiana. And then I have one buyer in Rossbridge at 675. If that goes through, I just got off the phone with the guy. He wants to have him look at a $600,000 home in Helena. And then the guy in Helena, will then return and buy a $250,000 piece of land. So that's two buyers that turned into an additional four more or so. I don't even know math-wise. It's like eight transactions off two buyers. So let's, let's, let's unpack this for a second. So um, the reason I believe, Blake, that you are seeing all these opportunities come from developing an off-market specialization. The reason this is so powerful, y'all, is that Blake is specializing in something that is a very specific problem in today's market. Okay, so buyers don't want to buy and sellers don't want to sell because it's too damn hard to buy. Like sellers are like, I'd love to sell, but where am I going to go? And buyers are like, I need to buy but I don't want to get this multiple offer situation. I don't want to pay. I don't want to get in a bidding war that requires me to pay 20 to $30,000 over list price. I ain't doing all that crap. So this particular buyer that Blake's talking about, he's buying a house for his mom and his mom is on a fixed income. And she can't afford over 190,000. She can't afford to go over 200, whatever it is. And that means she can't afford to get in a bidding war. And she's got to work with a real estate agent that knows how to identify off market sellers in the area and price point that she's interested in. So this solves a really big problem. And, and the, the thing that makes it like is the icing on the cake is that Blake can deliver on this promise. Like I can find you an off market property. Okay. And so that's just going to mean 
a lot of referrals, a lot of word of mouth because money flows in the direction of real estate that solve problems. So if you guys go and listen to this latest uh, Magic City Business podcast on Apple, I want you all to give it a five-star rating and I want you to comment on it. I want you to leave a comment and a five-star rating when you listen to this podcast. But one of the things I want you to hear when you listen to it is just how satisfied Jordan is with this amazing specialization that has created this amazingly profitable business. So I want you to hear that in her voice. But I also want you to recognize that people are seeking her out. Like, and when people make a, a Facebook, a comment on Facebook about, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a short-term vacation rental expert in the Birmingham area. Just people start coming out of the woodwork and tagging Jordan. Tag, 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 Jordan Hosey, Jordan Hosey. Jordan. And so she doesn't have to spend any money on marketing. She's getting so many referrals, it's insane. So I want you to kind of hear that and see that. So if I am developing a relocation specialization like Aaron is, and I am, I moved here. So a lot of people that are moving here, they're telling friends about, and they're like, hey, you need to move here. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but when people go, hey, who's the, I got a friend looking to move here from Ohio. Who's the go-to agent like really knows how to take care of relocation folks? Oh, that's Aaron Martinez. Who's my off-market guy? Oh, that's Blake Ray. Who's my new construction specialist? Oh, that's Sandy. Hey, who's that? Like, if I'm for sale by order of my house and it's not going well, who's my go-to for that? Oh, it's Susan. I mean, you can be an internet lead generation and conversion specialist. I mean, there's so many specializations. So, you know, in order to be an internet um, lead specialist, you get, you tend to have to be really good at creating content because content is what drives lead generation. So typically you're going to be like the local celebrity agent. You're going to be the digital mayor in your town. Anybody else need something? I'm telling you, if you can just leave this call knowing like, and talking to yourself, like we get on this call, you're like, you know, Keith, you need to start talking to yourself like this. You need to be like, you need to start saying, I need to get my ass in gear and I need to focus on the big rocks, scheduling, research, mindset, time blocking, having those 10 conversations, developing a specialization, big life, big, big life. You like to travel. You like just to have a lot of money in the bank. For a rainy day, you like you just get you find a lot of peace in a rainy day fund. You want to pay off somebody's uh, bills, medical bills. You want to send a kid to college. What you want to do? What you want to do that means enough to you for you to stop focusing on what doesn't matter and start running the plays that work. What matters to you enough for you to go? Damn it! That's it. I'm going to start doing it the right way. I'm not going to stop doing it my way and I'm going to start doing it the right way. So some of y'all have heard me talk about how for so many years from 2004 to basically uh, getting close to 2010, I was constantly focused on reinventing the wheel and constantly focusing on doing it my way. And when I had a mentor of mine slap the crap out of me and go, what you doing? Demi, keep it simple, stupid. Run the plays that work. Run the plays that work. And so I went from a person who was always flying by the seat of their pants, who was always the flag and not the wind, to agent of the year in 2010. Okay. All right. Anything else? What we got? Speak now or forever hold your peace.
Amber, start running that business like a business. All right. You got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of needs, a lot of big goals. All right. We're going to make this happen together. We can achieve more. Goodbye. <laughs>